Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Myrna Loy and Cary Grant in I Love You Again with Frank McHugh. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Somewhere in the voluminous files of the Lux Radio Theater, there's a hastily scrawled memo that says, Team Myrna Loy and Cary Grant next week. I think that note was written four or five years ago. And our chance came last week when we discovered that through some happy studio miracle, Myrna was doing nothing but coaxing her flower garden to even greater glory, and the already tanned Mr. Grant was just lying on the beach tanning. A phone call to Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, and we had a comedy which made golden music at the box office. I Love You Again, from the story by Octopus Roy Cohn. Just imagine yourself walking into your own house with no recollection of what you'd been doing for the last nine years. That's the situation Cary Grant faces in the role of Larry Wilson. And to complicate things a bit more, Myrna Loy, as Mrs. Wilson, is extremely doubtful of his whole behavior. We have some doubters in this audience, too, I've discovered. They want to know how I, a mere man, can speak so confidently about Lux Flakes. Between the lines of their letters, I can read, What, my dear sir, have you ever washed in it? <laughs> well, well, here's the answer. Right now, I'm probably one of the biggest customers our product has. When you're shooting a technicolor picture like Reap the Wild Wind, you've got hundreds of brilliantly colored costumes to worry about. And in the course of a shooting schedule of about five months, those costumes get some pretty hard use. But we've got to keep them looking bright and fresh. And that's where Lux Flakes comes in. I know they're good business for me at Paramount. That's why I feel pretty safe in saying... They're good business for you at home. Now the Lux Radio Theater curtain goes up once more. This time on I Love You Again. Starring Cary Grant as Larry Wilson and Myrna Loy as Kay. With Frank McHugh as Doc. You'll meet at least one on every ocean liner. He's usually found in the ship's lounge drinking lemonade with the boys and talking about himself. He wears black suits and stiff collars, belongs to every club in his hometown, and never forgets his rubbers. He's a first-class bore. In our case, the bore is a certain Mr. Lawrence Wilson of Habersville, PA. At the bar of an ocean liner approaching New York Harbor, he's been boring three tired gentlemen for almost an hour. As yet, there's no sign of a letter. Oh, yes, sir, gentlemen. That watch was given to me by the Habersville Chamber of Commerce. <coughs> Pretty fine watch, isn't it? Terrific. Well, uh, L.J. Hawksburg himself made the presentation. L.J. is one of the biggest men in our town. Now, I can remember every word he said. He said, it is my pleasure and privilege to present this token of our esteem to one of our first and foremost citizens, Lawrence Wilson, for his unfailing energy as chairman, as cha- chairman he said, that's what he said, of the Habersville Morals and Clean Government Committee. Oh, fine, fine. Uh-huh. I'll bet you're some pumpkins back there in Hatterville. Uh, yeah, well, you know how it is. <clears throat> well, gentlemen, last night out, how about having a farewell drink with me? A uh, Dutch treat, of course. Yes, I figured that one out. Oh, uh, Stuart, service, please. Yes, sir. <clears throat> well, what'll it be, boys? Bourbon and soda. Make mine the same. All right, Stuart. <laughs> you know mine? Yeah, ginger ale and grape juice. Oh, come on now, Wilson, that's no drink. Oh, well, I'm sorry, fellas, but that's all I ever take. Hi, man. Hello, Ryan. Hi, fellas. Hi, Stuart. Fill her up. Hi, Wilson. How's the old sourpuss? <laughs> hey, Stuart, give the old sourpuss a drink. Thank you, Mr. Ryan, but I don't indulge. I don't indulge, eh? You're too good to drink with me, eh? I'm sorry. Good night, gentlemen. Come back here, you. Now, take it easy, Ryan. Mr. Wilson doesn't drink. I know. Grape juice Wilson. But tonight, he does. Listen, Wilson, you've snooted me long enough on this boat. Take off that stuffed shirt. Come on. Knock me down. Mr. Ryan, you're inebriated. Oh, so I'm inebriated, huh? I'll show you from inebriated. I'll walk a straight line with anybody on this boat. With anybody on any boat. I'll even go out there in the deck and walk along the rail. Oh, now, here, here, Ryan. Don't go out on deck. Inebriated, huh? Oh, now, come back, Ryan. Come inside. Let 
Oh, I'll show you. Oh, Ryan, Ryan, you fall overboard. That's me, John. I get away from that rail. Listen, Ryan, old man. There, how's that? Right up on the rail. Oh, now come down. You're too intoxicated to realize your peril. What's this one, Wilson? Tightrope walking. I can balance myself like a... Hey, oh, hey, oh, now be careful. Hold me. I'm slipping. Hey, hey, let me go. Help. Oh, no, let go. Hey. Oh, look out. We're both falling. Oh, oh, oh let go. Oh, let go. Oh, let go. Oh, 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 oh
Well, I think it might be a good idea to take an inventory of our Mr. Wilson's luggage. Say, it's funny, ain't it? Here we are talking about you and a guy named Wilson, and you're both guys. Uh, look at this suit. I must have borrowed that from an undertaker. What's all this stuff? Hair restorers, saltine crackers, dyspepsia tablets? I got a bottle of gargle. Yeah, I certainly took good care of Wilson. Here's a lot of papers and stuff. Boy, <laughs> were you a joiner? Rotary, elks, owls, community chest, primrose leak. Wait a minute. What's it? A bank book. Oh, no, we're getting somewhere. Give it a minute. Abbotsville National Bank. Lawrence Wilson checking account C. $147,083. Let me take a look at that. And that's the C account. That means there must be an A and B as well. It might even go right through the alphabet. Hey, uh, why wouldn't it be a good idea for Mr. Wilson to pay a visit to Happersville? Just long enough to get the money, huh? Do you think he can swing it? Well, it's worth trying. There's a fortune in this thing. Hey, Doc, how'd you like to go in on it with me? Do you mean it? I'll cut you in for 25%. I'd have done it for 10 After all, you saved my life. Well, look, uh, I'm going to need some money. I think I'll send a radio grant to the Happersville National Bank. I'll tell them to send me five grand to the Whitney Hotel tomorrow morning when we land. 25% <laughs> of five grand? Oh, boy, what a cut. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. There's one thing, Doc. You've got to stick close to me. If anybody starts asking questions, if I seem to be getting into a tight spot, I'll pull a feint, and don't you forget to catch me. Trust me, pal. I'll be a regular Florence Nightingale. Oh, uh, come on, Doc. Snap it up. We go right to the hotel. See the happy built bank is set that. Well, well. What's the matter? Oh, get a load of that girl over there. There's a dish for you, huh? Wonder who she's waving to. Come on, come on. Keep your mind on your work. Larry! Oh, Larry! Huh? Larry? La- La- hey, that's you. Oh, Larry, are you all right? Huh? For me? Well, sure, sure. I'm fine. I'm fine. I, I, uh, How are you? Well, Larry, the papers all said you were injured. Oh, well, nothing serious. You know how papers are. Well, it certainly is good to see you. Yes, I know you're surprised. <laughs> Surprise isn't the word. Uh, 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 Larry. Uh, <laughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, this is Doc Ryan. Doc, this is... Uh, uh, uh... <laughs> yes, sir. Good old Doc Ryan. <laughs> How are you, Dr. Ryan? Well, never met better, miss. Thanks to Larry. You know, Larry, Habersville is pretty proud of that rescue. Oh, Habersville, eh? Well, well, well. Good old Habersville. Mm, did you, uh, uh, did you just leave there? Well, when I read you were hurt, I didn't know how seriously. Naturally, I had to come. Oh, well, naturally. Well, uh, well, it certainly is good to see you. Yes, so you said. I don't know. Well, it's worth repeating. Larry, you seem so strange. Who, me? Me? Oh, no, that's just because you haven't seen me for a while. Before you know it, uh, we'll be right back where we were. Larry, what in heaven's name is the matter with you? Nothing. Why? I, uh, well, I'm just uh, surprised to see you here. Well, what's so surprising about that? Habersville would think it very proper for a wife to meet her husband. Oh, I don't know about... Huh? <laughs> huh? Wife? Did you... Did she... Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> Larry, what is it? What's the matter? Oh, nothing, nothing at all. I'm fine. I'm just, uh... <laughs> I'm wonderful. Oh, no, no, you're not. You're sicker than you think. You need a lot of rest and oh, quiet. Oh, nonsense, nonsense. I never felt better in my life. I'll take you to your hotel. Huh? Oh, uh, sure. Oh, now, listen, Larry. Now, go away, Doc. Go away. Can't a man speak to his own wife? everything very satisfactory, sir. This suite is one of our very best. Sure, sure. Thank you very much. That's all for now. Yes, sir. <laughs> <sighs> well, dear? Larry, a whole suite. It isn't like you. Oh, now the best is none too good for you, uh, Mrs. W. <laughs> well, uh, here we are, just us two. Cozy, isn't it? Uh, Larry, I'd like to talk a bit if you feel up to it. Oh, talk. Oh, talk, yes. <laughs> well, of course, uh, sit down, dear. If you don't mind, I'll sit over here. Uh, I don't know quite how to begin. Huh? Begin what? Well, I've had a long time to think things over. I've decided once and for all to go through with the divorce. The divorce? Yes. Well, uh, uh... Oh, but now wait, you can't do that. I've made up my mind, Larry. Yes, but a divorce, why, that, that that's awful. After all, we mustn't be too hasty about this thing. I wouldn't call five years exactly hasty. Mm, well, some mightn't, some mightn't. Mm. You know, a thing like a divorce, well, it can break up a marriage. So I've heard. <laughs> Uh, now, what's more, very often what really seemed a good reason for a divorce isn't a good reason for a divorce at all. Now, uh, take, for instance, if I'd, uh, well, well, if I'd beaten you or something like that. <laughs> I'd like to see you try it. 
Well, then, uh, say I'd been uh, running around with some woman. You with a woman? Oh, don't be ridiculous. Oh, well, after all, you know, sometimes a vacation can change a man a lot, the sea air and all that. I'm afraid it'll take more than sea air to change you, Larry. Well, what's the matter with me? Look, look, let's forget the divorce and try it just once more, starting from scratch, huh? It's too late, Larry. Nonsense, it's never too late. Why, I'll tell you what we'll do. There's someone at the door. All right, I'll ignore it. Go away. You might as well answer it, Larry. I'm leaving anyway. Oh, but listen. I'll be at the shore haven until tomorrow if you want to get caught. Oh, hello, Mrs. Wilson. Why, Mrs. Wilson. Oh, Mr. Billings, how are you? Oh, couldn't be keener, thanks. I'm just leaving. I'll probably be seeing you, though. Yeah, I hope so. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye. Oh, wait, don't go. Goodbye, Larry. Well, well, Mr. Wilson, there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with you. That's what you think. <laughs> Say, Larry, I met Mr. Billings in the lobby. He came all the way from the Habersville National Bank. That's right. Bank. <laughs> Bank. Oh, <laughs> well, well, Mr. Billings, how are you? Well, it couldn't be keener, thanks. Oh, shall we get right down to business? Oh, yes, indeedy. I got your wireless, Mr. Wilson, and uh, here's your money. Uh, <laughs> 5000 5000 Here you are, sir. Well, well, I call that service. Me too. <laughs> now, now, let me see. These 5000 here make you 2700 overdrawn. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but wrong. Well, when, when you went away, you had a deposit with us, $2,800. Uh-huh. Then we paid 500 for you on that plot of land at Marshall's subdivision. <laughs> oh, by the way, here's your deed for that. <laughs> and, uh, and I owe the bank $2,700? Uh-huh. Oh, but the bank was only too glad to accommodate you. <laughs> uh, well, uh, what about those other accounts, the uh, B and C accounts? Oh, oh, those. Well, those are separate. Oh, well, fine. Go ahead. <laughs> well, here we are. In the C account, we have $147,000 and 83 cents. <laughs> Look, would, uh, would you repeat that, please, sort of uh, slowly? Oh, sure. $147,000 and 83 cents. Oh. <laughs> that's the community chest account. <laughs> huh? <laughs> I said that's the community chest account. Naturally, all checks drawn on that have to be countersigned by Mr. Sims. Miss Breathway, two directors of the fund, and yourself. Oh. What about the National Guard? Don't they have to sign them, too? <laughs> <laughs> well, now, in the B account, which is the anti vice League fund, we have... Uh, the the oh, anti vice League. Uh, uh-huh. uh, I think I'd rather not know how much we have there. Oh, well, <laughs> well, just you say, Mr. Wilson. Well, I'd better run along. I trust I've made everything clear. Oh, terribly clear. Give my greetings to Mr. Sims and Miss Breathway. Oh, you? I will indeed. I will. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Um, uh, the more I learn about Larry Wilson, the more I like termites. Raising all that good dough for the anti-vice league. You certainly were a stinker. Uh, wasn't I? <laughs> oh. Wait a minute. Now, Larry Wilson may be a dope, but in Habersville, he's trusted and respected, huh? Sure. A guy that raises thousands of dollars for a chest certainly ought to be able to raise a little for himself. Uh, let's see. Mm. Well, it's Pennsylvania. How about oil? There's a lot of money in oil. Oh, we'll do it, Doc. We'll locate Duke Sheldon. He specializes in oil. We'll wire him to meet us down there. Wait a minute. What about your wife? I don't know. I don't know why. Oh, dear. She's divorcing me. I meet a girl, and in 20 minutes, she's divorcing me. Now, can't let her do that. I need her more than ever now. What for? Well, with a divorce going on, Larry Wilson couldn't sell peanuts in a town like that. Now, where's my coat? Where are you going? To the shore haven. To call on the little woman. Who is it? Open this door. Take it easy. Open the door, I'll smash it down. Hey, what's the idea? Where is she? Where are you hiding her? Kay? Kay? Hey, who are you? You know very well who I am. Do I? Uh, what I mean is, uh, who do you think you are? Where is she, Larry? Come on. Well, uh, where's who? You know who. Where's Kay? She was here with you. Oh, was that Kay? Shut up. She's been here. I looked at the register. Oh, did you now? Yes, Lawrence Wilson and wife. That's how you signed it, you dirty sneak. What do you mean by that? Well, after all, she is my wife, isn't she? Yes, she may be your wife, but she's engaged to me. Holy smoke. Engaged to you? Now, wait. Why should Kay want to divorce me? Answer me that. You know why. Oh, do I? I mean, uh, well, of course I do, but do you? I'll say I do, and so does everybody who knows you. Why, it's written all over you. Kay wasn't married to you. Kate McLean, Kate McLean. She was married to the Rotary, the Kiwanis, the Lions, and the Greater Habersville Committee. Boy, is that bigamy. Yeah, will you please get rid of your wisecracking stooge? We'll settle this thing between the two of us. There's nothing to settle. Things and people have changed. All bets are off. From now on, it's every man for himself. You promised Kay a divorce. I might have known you wouldn't keep your word, you dirty double-crossing. Oh, you've been asking for this. And you ask for this. 
I guess you forgot I was the amateur champ of Boonton County. Well, so long, Larry. Hi, pal. Come on now. Wake up, pal. Wake up. Oh, dear. Mm-hmm. Boy, are you going to have a shiner. Oh, my. Well, he might at least have told me his name. Now, get me out. Where's the phone? What for? I'm going to call my wife. You don't think I'm going to take this lying down, do you? You were doing pretty well just a minute ago. <laughs> I'm going to call her and take her out to dinner. And just let that guy try to interfere, that's all. A husband has some rights in this state. Champagne. Good old bubbly. Hmm? Nothing like it, is there, dear? Have some more? Thank you. I've had enough. And if you ask me, Wilson, so have you. Who asked you? Look, darling, did you have to bring your bodyguard along with us? Herbert and I are engaged, Larry. Oh, yes, Herbert, and you are engaged. Hmm. That's what he said this morning, didn't you, Herbert? Now, look here, Wilson. Kay and I came here tonight for only one reason. We want to know what you're going to do about the divorce. Divorce? Oh, Kay can have the divorce. She can? Yes, in a month or six weeks. But I am opposed to this unseemly haste. Somebody might get the idea my wife didn't like me. Oh, you can't fool me, Wilson. It's not Kay you're thinking of. It's the Chamber of Commerce. Huh? Of course, I might have known. Six weeks, you said. And by an odd coincidence, that happens to be the date set for the election for president of the Chamber of Commerce. Oh, now, wait. No wonder you ordered the best suite in town and dining here tonight at the most expensive restaurant. Everything you've done since you got off that boat. All for the Chamber of Commerce. Oh, well, not all. Honestly, Kay. You're just afraid a divorce will hurt your chances. But I'm not going to ruin my life so you can win an election. I should say not. Mm, very well, then. Unless Kay comes back to Happersville with me for six weeks and palms herself off as my devoted and loving wife, I'll fight the case. I would feel it my duty. If he feels it's his duty, sir, that we're so. Mm. We'll have to give in. Herb, yeah, you're taking my wife. The least you can do is give me the Chamber of Commerce. Well, all right, you win. Mm, thanks, Herb. <laughs> I believe this is your hotel, Wilson. That's right. Mm-hmm. Thanks very much, Herb. Well, good night, Kay, dear. Good night, Larry. Uh, <clears throat> Kay, uh, do you think, uh, that is, if Herbert doesn't mind, if I kissed you goodbye? Now, now, listen. It's all right, Herbert. It doesn't mean anything. Oh, that's right. Not a thing. I just mean this way a little, dear. <laughs> oh, well, go on. Lift your hat a little. <laughs> well, that's the girl. <laughs> all right, Wilson. That's enough. I said that's enough. Now, look here, Wilson. Say, what do you think this is? Now, cut it off. Let her go. For heaven's sakes. Doesn't mean a thing. <laughs> well, farewell, Kay, and don't look back. It'll be easier. So long, Herb. <laughs> Just a moment, Mr. DeMille presents Act Two of I Love You Again, starring Myrna Loy, Cary Grant, and Frank McHugh. Now, I'm going to ask Lou Silvers to play a march for us. All right, Lou? <laughs> a march? You wouldn't get very far if you traveled at that rate of speed. Well, now listen to this. Now, that's more like it. Yes, it's three times as fast. And that illustrates one important fact about new quick lux. It's three times as fast. In water as cool as your hand, new quick lux gives you suds three times as fast as any of ten other leading soaps. Not just twice as fast, three times as fast. That's one reason so many women prefer lux flakes, Mr. Ruick. Yes, indeed, Sally. And there are other reasons. Of course. We know we can count on lux for purity. That's right, Sally. You see, some soaps contain harmful alkali, which weakens fabrics and fades colors. But New Quick Lux hasn't a bit of harmful alkali. It's safe for anything safe in plain water. And the little goes so far, it's thrifty, too. No wonder twice as many women use Lux flakes for stockings, underthings, sweaters, and nice dresses. Twice as many as use any other flakes, chips, or beads. Buy a big box of New Quick Lux flakes tomorrow for your pretty washer. It's fast, thrifty, and so gentle that it keeps things new-looking longer. You'll find new quick lux at your grocers in the same familiar package at no extra cost to you. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Act 
two of I Love You Again, starring Myrna Loy as Kay and Cary Grant as Larry, with Frank McHugh as Doc. Larry Wilson, amnesia victim and confidence man extraordinary, is piecing together the jigsaw puzzle of a life he doesn't remember. And with a wife like Kay as one of the principal parts, he's looking forward to finishing the picture. Traveling by separate compartments, they've taken the train back home to Habersville, but to avoid gossip, they get off arm in arm with Doc Ryan, two steps to the rear. Ah, Habersville. Good old Habersville. Why, the very air smells different in Habersville. That's the glue factory. Oh. Hey, Larry, look. It's a welcome committee. Welcome for me? Of course, you know you're a hero. Hiya, Larry! 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 Hiya,
Uh, sorry? <laughs> I'm sort of sorry I'm not in love with you anymore. Because if I were still in love with you, I'd be awfully in love with you right now. <laughs> okay, okay. I'd like to show you the most wonderful game of two-handed post office. I think I'd better drink my coffee now. Yeah, but listen, Kay, how about the post... Listen, we'd better have an understanding. I'm in this house simply because of our agreement uh -huh. to convince the general public that I'm still your wife. Well, all right. Convince me. I'm one of the public. That strikes me as a pretty foul thing to say about the public. Okay, you're certainly making me pay for those scrambled eggs. You're not even eating them. Well, I'm not hungry. Oh, you're not. Uh, that is, I mean, uh, well... Oh, you're not hungry. I see. You got me out of bed and spoiled my sleep, but you're not hungry. Well, I'm not really. I guess... You don't want to eat your nice scrambled eggs? No, dear. Then how would you like to wear them over your ears? Kate! Good night. Hello, Mrs. Wilson. How's my patient? Insufferable. Hi, Larry. How'd you make out with her? Just dandy. Hey, what have you got in your head? Scrambled eggs. What do you think? <laughs> I didn't know. No. What'd you find out in town? It's pie. Well, that town's loaded with dough. Just right for an oil boom. Hey, not so loud. Did you phone the hotel? Yeah, Sheldon just got in. He's going to plant the oil tomorrow. Good. Now, uh, now, what about me? You're the manager of a big pottery works here. What? Oh... I make pots? Yeah. You may not have any money, but you've certainly got plenty of pots. Oh, <laughs> pots. That's just what I've always wanted, a whole lot of pots. <laughs> well, Larry, it's fine. Well, that whole thing, yes, indeed. No Welcome back, Mr. Wilson. Wilson. The office hasn't been the same without you. Oh, thank you, boys. Thank you very much. Right now, we've all got our little jobs to attend to. That's right, boys. On the job now. Oh, uh, say, Mr. Wilson, yes? I've got some great news. Seventy hours from kill to shipping. Oh, fine. Now, uh, shall we bear down on the jigger wheel or on the pug mill? Uh, uh, oh, on the uh, bugger wheel. <laughs> By all means. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Wilson, your wife is here. Yeah, my wife. Oh, my wife, yes. Well, send her in. Outside, everybody. Do your jobs, please. Well, uh... Hello, Kay. Hello, Larry. What would you like to hit me with this morning? I can recommend the inkwell. <laughs> the inkwell right there. I'm not going to apologize. You were terribly aggravating. Oh, well, then I'll apologize. I should have ducked. Larry, it's the 15th. Hmm? Well, certainly it's the 15th. By all means, the 15th. That means tomorrow is the 16th. <laughs> oh, dear. What? Something wrong? It's just continually amazing to me the things you can think of to keep from writing a check. A check? Oh, yeah, the 15th, yes. I guess we've established that, all right. Well, no, just slip a mind, Kay. All the excitement of getting home, you know, and... Uh, well, now, let me see now. That, uh, that would be how much? You know perfectly well how much. And don't try to tell me that slipped your mind. Well, no, certainly not. Now, uh, mm, uh, well, what about $200? What? Well, j just for the time being, of course. If you run short, just call on me. Well, don't wake me up. Let me dream. Well, goodbye. I'm going shopping. Oh, no. We're going shopping. You need a man's advice. No, thanks. The last time I went shopping with you, I ended up in a cut-price Mother Hubbard. Yes, yes, and today you may end up in a creation by Charmaine. Come on. Just a minute. Where did you learn about Charmaine? Hmm? Oh, uh, uh, I read about it on the boat. I see. Do you know how much a Charmaine creation might cost? Oh, about a hundred, two hundred. What's the difference? Larry, do you mind if I just faint quietly? <laughs> Tea. Ah, yes, tea. Nothing like tea after a hard day's shopping, is there? Just look at the rain out there. And here we sit warm and cozy. I love this place. Well, so do I. Now, look, uh, you see those tea leaves? You want your fortune told? Please. Well, uh, here we go. <clears throat> I, uh, I see someone in your life. It's a man. No. Mm, yes, it is. It's a tall, dashing, handsome man with a striped tie, just like mine. Go on. Well, isn't that enough? He's tall, he's handsome, and uh, very dashing. That's what puzzles me, the dashing. It's there, all right, and I don't understand it. Oh, nothing at all. Give me your cup. I tell fortunes, too. Huh. Well, uh, well, see anybody I know? Mm-hmm. It's a woman. Wonderful. What does she look like? Suppose you tell me. Well, uh, she's about five foot five, lovely complexion, hair just like yours. Seriously, Larry, I'd like to know what she's like. Who? The woman. The one who taught you about Charmaine and dancing and, and being dashing? Oh, uh, oh, her! Where'd you meet her, on the boat? Uh, yes, yeah, sort of. Of course, if you don't want to talk about it. Well, no, there's really not much to talk about. I mean, uh, nothing's really happened yet. Oh, but it will, Larry, I'm sure of it. Honey, 
Honey, if you're sure of it, that's good enough for me. I know it's none of my business, but uh, I've been worried that you might have changed like this, you know, to please me and maybe patch things up. But, of course, that's out of the question. My plans are all made with Herbert. Oh, Herbert. <laughs> should have stuffed Herbert. That's all I should have done. <laughs> Herbert. Have you ever taken a good look at Herbert? Now, listen here, Larry. Don't spoil everything. Well, you can take a good look at him now. He's just outside the window making faces at us. Look at the poor Oh, my hey. goodness. I had a date with Herbert. He'll never forgive me standing out there in the rain. Poor thing. Goodbye, Larry. Wait, wait. You can have him clean the press. You look just as good as new. Oh, keep quiet. Uh-huh. Evening, Mother dear. Larry, listen. Herbert's been here all evening. He just left. I don't like it. Well, neither do I, Mother, but what can I do? You can go and speak to Kay about it. Yeah. Where is she? In her room. And if you have to, kick in the door. Oh, Mother, you pioneer woman. <laughs> See you later. Who is it? It's me, Larry. Open the door or I'll kick it down. What? Open the door. You hear me? Open. Oh. Oh! <laughs> well, uh, <coughs> hello. I <laughs> I thought it was locked. Well, suppose it had been. I would have kicked it down. What for? Well, <laughs> so I could come in. Larry, I've just spent two hours straightening things out with Herbert. Don't you think you've gotten me into enough trouble for today? No. Sometimes you remind me of a high school boy on a street corner whistling at girls. Mm, well, it's romantic to whistle at the opposite sex. Birds do it. Love birds. Love birds don't whistle. They coo. They do, too, so whistle. Sort of a low cooing whistle, like this. Oh. Oh. Mm. Gets you, doesn't it? <laughs> Not particularly. Oh, it gets me. I once knew of a case where a female lovebird locked a male lovebird out of her nest. He stood outside and cooed for hours. Oh. Oh, oh it's pitiful. Poor fella. Finally, he lost his temper and kicked the door of the cage down. And what do you think the female lovebird did then? Gave him a sharp peck at the base of the skull. Not at all. She put her soft little wing around him inside. Oh. And laid him an egg. <laughs> oh, Larry. Larry, will you please, for heaven's sakes, leave me alone? Oh, okay. I haven't done anything. Oh, you haven't. You've done everything you could think of to make me miserable. Okay, what have I done? I suppose you didn't take me out and buy me the most expensive clothes in town. Was that bad? And I suppose you didn't say nice things and pay me dozens of compliments and try your best to please me. You were just as nice and sweet and kind as you could be, and you know it. Oh, well, when you put it that way, I guess I've been a heel. (laughs) You're not getting anywhere, and I wish you'd stop it. Hmm? I want you to be yourself. Your owl-stuffing, speech-making, pompous old self. Oh, well, now, let's get this clear. You're upset because I'm acting as though I found you lovely. Yes. But you are lovely. There you go again. Oh, well, I was only... Larry! Now, I've got something to tell you, and I don't want you to say another word. Not a word? Just keep quiet, understand? Well, all right. You said before that I was lovely, Mm -hmm. attracted Mm -hmm. to you. Well, that's not so. It's your pride, that's all. You're losing me, so suddenly I seem worth holding on to. But it isn't me. It's just the idea of ever giving up anything that ever belonged to you. You don't love me, and you never did. Public opinion is the only thing you love. Public opinion, public buildings, public positions. That's why I resent your attentions, and that's why my door is going to stay locked as long as I'm in this house. Now, if you've got anything to say, please make it short. Oh. <laughs> oh, you get out of here. Oh, no, gosh, Kay, there's nothing to cry about. I was only... Oh, please go away. Please. Oh. All right, Kay. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mr. DeMille returns in a moment for Act Three of I Love You Again, starring Cary Grant, Myrna Loy, and Frank McHugh. But now, it's a lovely summer night, but Anne's not dancing. She's upstairs, all alone, packing her bags. There, that's done. And tomorrow morning I can get away from here, thank goodness. I hate it. I've been so lonely. So awfully lonely. Darn that music. Poor Anne. Of course she's unhappy. Planning all year for that two weeks vacation full of fun and dates and dances. 
only to have it turn out a miserable, lonely failure. Libby, what would you say to girls like Anne? Well, there's one thing I'd like to say to Anne and to all the thousands of girls who are planning weekends and vacations now. It's just this. If you're looking forward to good times, new friends, perhaps romance, then be sure that everything you wear is fresh and sweet and dainty. For neglect of daintiness is one of the surest reasons for finding yourself left out of things. Not invited, not one of the crowd. People won't tell you what's the matter. They just leave you alone. It's cruel, but it's true. The only thing to do is never, never take chances. And after all, it's very easy to protect daintiness nowadays because new quick lux takes away perspiration fast. It takes only a minute or so to lux under things every night, and then you know you won't offend. Dresses need frequent luxing, too, and that's just as easy. Any dress safe in water, you know, is safe in lux. I'm sure if Anne had taken Libby's advice, she would have felt something like this as she packed her bags at the end of her vacation. There, I guess everything's packed. My, I hate to leave and say goodbye to everybody. But Bob says he won't let me say goodbye to him. Oh, it's been such a wonderful time. Just perfect. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. The curtain rises on the third act of I Love You Again. There's no use arguing with Kay Wilson because her mind's made up. The door's been closed on Larry and he's shut out of her life. In his office the next morning, Larry has decided to go through with his oil swindle and call it quits. It's a cinch, pal. Duke's got an option on all the land surrounding yours. Now, here's the map. Mm-hmm. Is that my name there? That's it, Marsh Creek. Marsh Creek, huh? Now, what about the oil? Duke planted it all over the place. It's oozing up through the creek to beat the band. But nobody's given it a tumble yet. Say, it might take weeks for anybody to see it out there in that jungle. Yeah, well, we'd have to fix that somehow. Marsh Creek, huh? Have to get the yokels down there. Did you get a line on any of them? Did I? Take a look at this. All the big income tax brackets. Mm-hmm. Then in Hawkesburg. Hmm. Look at that. An income of 210 grand. Edward Littlejohn, 131,000. If we could only get a couple of these old boys to go swimming in that creek. Yeah, swimming in oil up to their necks. How are we going to do it? Oh, Mr. Wilson. Uh, yes, Miss, uh, Miss, uh... Is it all right for Corporal Bellison now? Uh, what do you mean, is it all right? It's Thursday, you know. Oh, that's right, so it is. Who is Corporal Bellinson? Oh, who is Corporal Bellinson? You tell him, Miss, uh... Oh, he uh, has a ranger medallion, two silver stars, and a community stripe. You don't say. You may come in, Corporal. Good morning, sir. Corporal Bellinson reporting to Scout Leader Wilson. Scout Leader? Who's that scout? (laughs) Why, good morning, Corporal. Mr. Wilson, the troop is very proud of you, sir. That rescue at sea. Well, thank you. It's two o'clock, Mr. Wilson. The troop's outside already. Where are they going? Well, that's up to Mr. Wilson. Uh, oh, he can't go this morning. But it's Hawksburg's test today, sir. It is out of the question. Uh, 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 wait. Did you say Hawksburg? Well, yes, sir. What, you mean, uh, uh, Leonard Hawksburg's little boy? Sure, Junior. He's been waiting for you to get back to take the test for first class ranger. And so is little John. Uh, uh, little, little John, oh. eh? Well, of course, yes. Oh, well, I've worked out a special test for today, a sort of a test by water. You remember, Doc, we were just talking about the water test? Of course, very interesting. That's splendid, sir. But first, how about shooting the buck? All right, I'll fade it. Dr. (laughs) Ryan. I'm ashamed of you, Corporal, gambling at your age. What? This morning, Corporal, we have a new test. Brand new. Really, sir? Yes, indeed, the swimming test. Tell the men we're leaving in ten minutes for uh, Marsh Creek. Mr. Wilson, sir. Yes, Corporal? We've just taken the test, sir, and I'd like to report that the whole troop is all over tar. Tar? Well, where did you get tar on you? In the creek, sir. Oh, Corporal, this is terrible. Tell the troop to report to their homes. I imagine their fathers will find a way to take it off. Troop 7, report home and get the tar washed off. Well, come in, Mr. Hawksburg. Come in, gentlemen. Thank you. Sit right down. How are you, Larry? Fine. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Ryan. Mr. Hawksburg, doctor. How are you? How do you do? This is Mr. Little John, Mr. Bell. How do you do, sir? Well, gentlemen, to what do I owe this visit? <clears throat> and Larry, I'll come right to the point. The responsible element of this town wants to do something concrete to show our appreciation for what you've done for Haverson. Oh, come now, gentlemen. I've done nothing. You've done a lot, Larry. Oh, of course, my boy. And this is what we've decided to do. You own a piece of land here near Mars Creek. Yes, I believe I do. Well, the state is building a new highway through the suburbs, and we've brought some pressure to see that it runs out through your land. We can take it off your hands at a good profit. 
Well, now, that's awfully decent of you. I only paid 2500 for that piece, you know. Now, what would you say to a check for $10,000? A cool profit of 7500 Why? Why, that's 300% of my investment. Oh, it's too much. We feel you've got it coming to you, Larry. Of course, oh, my boy. You make me feel like a profit dealer. Not at all, not Excuse at all. Excuse me, gentlemen. Somebody at the door. Well, Larry, my boy, what do you say? What's well, a deal, gentlemen. Splendid. I've got a check right here. Oh, I've got the deed right here someplace. <laughs> I must see Mr. Wilson at once, sir. It's a matter of the utmost importance. But he's busy. He can't be disturbed. He can and will be disturbed. Now, just a minute, you. Stand aside, sir. Sorry to intrude, gentlemen. Which one of you is Mr. Wilson? Well, uh, I am Mr. Wilson, sir. Thank you. My name is Sheldon, Colonel E.J. Sheldon. Oh, well, uh, how do you do, Colonel? Mr. Wilson, I'll be brief. You're owner of Marsh's subdivision, I believe. Oh, yes. Splendid. I'm prepared to make you a handsome offer for that land, $25,000. Uh, what? You mean that? I am not in the habit of joking, sir. Oh, <laughs> well, Colonel Sheldon must have heard about the new road. New road? I know of no road. I'm in the gravel business, Mr. Wilson, and your land contains valuable deposits of this substance. Uh, gravel on my land? Why, it's ridiculous. Of course it is. Larry, we'll match his offer dollar for dollar. Mm, you course. will? Why, that's wonderful. Yes, indeed. Larry, what are you doing? Are you selling the lot you own? No, not yet, Kay, but it looks like I will. You know what's on the land? Uh, well, yes, dear. Yes, I know all about the gravel deposits. Gravel deposits? My foot. It's oil. Huh? Oh, just oil. a wild rumor. Just a wild rumor, I'm sure. It These isn't things a wild rumor. And... This is oil. Gobs of it. I just heard about it. Oil, eh? Well, Sheldon, you've no right to come in and try to swindle one of our town's leading citizens. Uh, of course Permit not. me to inform you that I have options on all the surrounding land. I'll give you 100000 for a half interest in your property, Mr. Wilson. Now, look here, Colonel Sheldon. Oh, I couldn't think of it. My final offer is 200000 Now, wait a minute, uh, Colonel Sheldon, suppose we buy you up. With what? With hard cash. How much do you want for your option? I own four parcels. I'll take 50000 each. All right, it's a deal. We'll meet later tonight and sign all the papers. Yeah, we'll yes, do. indeed. That was great work, pal. A clean profit of 200,000 smackers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what happened to Kay? Kay? Oh, I saw a glad a minute ago with a letter in her hand. Say, that reminds me. How did she know about the oil? That's what I want to find out. Okay. Okay. Wait a second. Hello, Larry. Uh, if your arm is going my way, I'll give it a lift. Thanks. Well, I deduce from your lack of hat as well as the envelope in your hand that you're going to mail a letter. Yes, to Herbert. Mm -hmm. I'm still so mad I could explode. Those crooks pretending to be your friends. And Herbert's no better. He acted as though I were a common thief. Thought I ought to be glad of a chance to pick a pocket legally. Oh, so that was how you knew. Yes, Herbert came to me. He wanted me to get the land from you. Larry, you're the only honest one in the whole crowd. <coughs> me? You're really too good for this town. Uh, no, not really. Oh, here's the mailbox. And that's that. Uh, <laughs> exit Herbert? Exit Herbert. Uh. I want to walk. Let's go up on top of the hill, shall we? Delighted. Isn't it a lovely view from here? Yeah. Yeah, certainly worth the climb. Now, I don't tell me you've forgotten this place. Huh? Oh, forgot? Oh, no. How could I forget it? It was right about here. No, no. I would have said it was a little more to the left. I think you're right. Remember what you said? Uh, vaguely. You said, Kay, darling, marriage is the soundest investment two people can make. Ooh. Did I say... Oh. Kay, whatever made you marry me? Well, I felt that underneath that watch chain with all its large pins and trophies, there was another person, an exciting person, the sort of man I dreamt about marrying. Mm. Yes, he wasn't really there, though, was he? Oh, yes. But I didn't find him for a long time. I'm sorry I didn't find him sooner. Oh, now, don't apologize for what you thought about me. You were right. You're still right. I was terribly wrong. But I was afraid of falling in love with you again. Uh, well, if you were afraid then, you should be twice as afraid now. I don't understand that, Larry. Well, oh, darling, I hope you never will. Well, I'd better be getting back. Come on, let's go. Wait a minute. You make me sick, Larry. Huh? If there's anything that turns my stomach, it's a man who acts noble. Noble? You know darn well you love me. You're just being noble and giving me up because something's wrong. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to find out. Oh, now, Kay, wait. Ever since you got off that boat, you've been chasing me like, like an amorous goat. You've been trying your darndest to make me fall in love with you. And now you have. Now, I'm going to do the chasing. And believe me, brother, before I'm through, you're going to know you've been chased. Kiss me. Well? Oh, I know it right now! <laughs> You gotta 
get over to Duke's room. All those big shots are going to be there. Larry, what's the matter with you? Doc, how'd you like to work in my pottery mill? What's the angle? Making pots. What do you think? A chance to eat regularly and sleep regularly. Maybe have a little home of your own with a porch and a garden. Gee, sounds wonderful. Well, I'm glad you like it, Doc, because that's what we're going to do. What? You're crazy. We can't stay here after the oil deal. Uh, you know, you're not very quick today, Doc. The oil deal is off. Huh? What, uh, uh, what about the Duke? Oh, uh, yeah, the Duke to consider. I don't think Duke cares much for home and the kid is. He's just a wee bit mercenary. Yeah, and he likes money, too. <laughs> However, I may as well get it over with. It may be a tough fight, but I'm not afraid. Not much, I'm not. Mm. Don't do it, Larry. I've seen you fight in one fight and you were awful. I, I tell you, he'll tear you to bits. He'll cripple you. He'll chew your head off. Let me go with you, just in case. No, thanks, Doc. This is my job. I'll phone you when it's over, if I'm able. Larry! Larry, wait! Listen! He'll be murdered. He'll be... Mrs. Wilson! Mrs. Wilson! Where are you? What do you mean, the deal's off? What kind of a double cross have you and Ryan cooked up? Well, I'm through with rackets, Duke, that's all. You're not through with this one. Look, friend, this has been a hard winter. I haven't made a killing in months. If this is a rib, stop it, because it's not funny. It's not a rib, Duke, and it's not a double cross. I'm staying here in Habersville with my wife. Save your breath, pal. This moonlight and roses, who he don't fool me. You and that dame are up to something. You're wrong. She doesn't know a thing about it. Hello, darling. What? What? Kay! She don't know, huh? Kay, what are you doing here? It's all right, Larry. I just had a talk with Dr. Ryan. He told me everything about you. What? Larry, I had to let her in. I just couldn't help it. Shut up. Kay, I want you to go home. Nobody's going home. Now, she's got nothing to do with this, Duke. Let her go. My friend, I'm going to brain you. You overgrown bull, don't you dare lay a hand on him. Shut your trap, madam. <laughs> now, you listen to me, Wilson. If you and this Tootsie want to play house when we get the cash, okay. But this car goes right to the end of the line and nobody gets out till it gets there. You can't give me orders, you crook. That's right, lady. I'm a crook. What do you think he is, a Bible salesman? I don't care if he was an axe murderer. That's all finished. Uh, I've seen him in love before. It usually lasts four to six weeks. That's a lie. Lady, generally speaking, I never sock a dame. But I'm inclined to make an exception for you. All right, Duke. You asked for it. Ooh. Okay, pal, just slip this on for size. <coughs> oh, how dare you? You've killed him. I hope so. Water. Give him water. Oh, get the water pitcher. Oh, Larry. Larry, darling. Look at me. Here's the water. <laughs> Help, 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 I'm, I'm drowning. Oh, Larry, my poor darling. But, Kay, but Kay, how did you get on the boat? Oh, this is all your fault, Ryan. Your drunken behavior was inexcusable. Hey, it's coming back. Lie still, darling. Don't talk. You'll be all right in a minute. All right, Davis, get up and quit stalling. Uh, Davis. Uh, were you addressing me, sir? What do you think? Well, I'm afraid I don't know you. Holy Ike, he's back again. <laughs> Wait a minute. This isn't the boat. What's happened? Is he loony? Did I knock him goofy? Worse. You've ruined everything. What am I going to do with him now? Davis. George, don't you know me? Dukey. Duke Sheldon. Huh? Oh, Duke Sheldon? Well, I'm very flattered to meet you, Your Highness. Oh, what do we do? <laughs> you think of something. You sucked him. Oh, look, pal. Pull yourself together. We got a big deal on. Oh, well, if you'll call him my officer, I'll be glad to show you our full line of pots. Pots? The guy's nuts. I'm getting out of here. Now, listen, you Get can't... out of my way. I'm getting out. Goodbye, Your Highness. Oh, let me out. Come back here. You hear me? You can't get away with this. Oh, Larry. Larry, darling. Yes, dear? You... You've forgotten everything, haven't you? Of course not. I mean, when he hit you, you're Lawrence Wilson again. Uh... <laughs> Do you suppose if you got hit on the head again, you might be George Davis? Hey, wait. Put down that vase. I've got to do it, darling. Oh, no, no, no. Listen. Listen to me. Well? Kay, dear. Kay. Well? Oop. Oop. Darling. Oop. <laughs> Mr. DeMille brings news of next week's show in just a moment, and Cary Grant and Myrna Loy will return for their curtain calls. Meantime, a question for the ladies in our audience. How many years do you think women have been wearing silk stockings? Well, the answer is more than 250 years. Yes, good Queen Bess of England was presented with a pair of hand-knit black silk stockings way back in the 16th century. But today's filmy silks and nylons are a far cry from the bulky, heavy hose of Queen Elizabeth's day. 
Why, some of the newest nylons, for example, are so sheer you can read a newspaper through six layers of stockings. And now for another question. What do the people who make today's lovely stockings say about their care? Well, that's an easy question to answer. More than 90% of the hundreds of makers of silk and nylon stockings the country over, more than 90% of them recommend Lux Flakes. Now, that's expert advice, and you'll find it pays. For new quick Lux saves the vital elasticity of your stockings, the quality that helps them to give under strain, then spring back without running. You see, if you rub sheer hosiery with a cake of soap, or if you use flakes or chips containing harmful alkali, you're weakening the fibers. Soon, a thread may break. Then you've got to run. The smooth texture, the color of your stockings may be spoiled, too. So, for stocking beauty, and for longer stocking wear, always stick to gentle, new, quick Lux flakes. They're fast, thrifty, and safe. There's enough Lux in that generous big box to do your stockings for months. Now, here's Mr. DeMille with our stars. The spotlight turns to Man Alloy and Cary Grant again. We'll just say, we love them again, and I love you again. I'll bet he says that to all the actors, Manna. I thought it was very nice. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. <laughs> it's been a long time since we worked together, Cary. Years, isn't it? Yeah, five to be exact. Let's see, that makes our next date on uh, Monday, 1946, isn't it? Mm, it'll be a Monday, <laughs> all right. <laughs> a Monday night in the Lux Radio Theater, but it won't be five years. What, Mr. DeMille? You want us to come back right away? Right away, Carrie. Ooh. You like the performance that much? That much and more. Oh, well, now, why don't you save yourself a lot of bookkeeping, C.B., and pay us both for the, uh, for both jobs right now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, may maybe I'd better call you in 1946, Carrie. <laughs> What's your play here next week, Mr. DeMille? Next week, Myrna, we've scheduled one of the most exciting combinations of mystery and glamour that the screen has ever produced. The play is... Algiers, and the stars are Charles Boyer and Hedy Lamar. <laughs> You'll hear Char <laughs> You'll hear Charles Boyer as Pepe Lamoco. The same great role <laughs> The same great role he played in the Walter Wanger picture. And you'll hear Hedy Lamar as the girl who found an irresistible attraction in the man who lived outside the law. You're all invited to sail for Algiers next Monday night, and I hope nobody will miss the boat. Well, that sounds swell, C.B. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Good night. An A-plus for both of you. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Charles Boyer and Hedy Lamar in Algiers. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Myrna Loy appeared tonight through the courtesy of Metro Golden Mayor and is currently seen on the screen in their production of Love Crazy. Cary Grant has just finished making the RKO production Before the Fact, directed by Alfred Hitchcock, and Frank McHugh is now appearing in the Warner Brothers picture Manpower. Included in tonight's play were Arthur Q. Bryan as Duke Sheldon, Jack Arnold as Herbert, Jane Morgan as Mother, Dix Davis as Corporal Bellinson, and Ferdinand Meunier, Ralph Sedan, Earl Ross, Tyler McVeigh, and Betty Ventura. Our music is directed by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Ruick. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>